Is it? Can you hit record, Peter? And we'll yeah, start. Okay, he's already now. done it. All right. Okay, we'll jump into this, and basically, it's going to be about 30, 40 minutes of training, and like like this on the screen here, we want to just literally show you everything about how to build a highly profitable online Amazon FBA business. Okay, and more specifically, how to find and launch your first profitable products on Amazon in the next ninety days. So I want to show you everything or me and Peter would like to show you everything. Cause you know, when, when we go on some of these trainings and stuff, or this is from my experience, like there's some people that will hold back information and they'll put things behind a paywall. So, you know, you have to join their program to, to get these little nuggets of details, but we'd rather just show you everything. And then at the end, we'll talk a little bit about Pro Launch Ninja, which is our mentoring and coaching program. And if you guys would like any further help with this, and that's obviously available, but we want to try and give you everything you can so you can go off and do this on your own kind of kind of vibe. Um, so before we get into actual training, we'll just give you a bit of an insight into how me and Peter actually got to where we are uh, like right now doing these presentations. Um, so there's a bit of a background on me and Peter. I'm on the right there, Peter's on the left. My face is covered in mud. As you can see, Tom and do a lot, of, a lot of mountain bike and there's proof in the pudding. Um, and both me and Peter came from like nine to five jobs doing different things i started a year later uh, after meeting peter and started selling in 2019 and since then we've worked with a number of high level clients doing multiple seven and eight figures on amazon and yeah as you can see that you can, i'm an avid mountain biker and i do a lot of youtube which is interesting and then you can measure your bit of yourself, intro, alex. sorry i asked to interrupt you i think you understand <laughs> yourself he was alex is very chuffed with himself he had a he had a video go viral there in the last two weeks and he got like 2.2 million views so he's like oh yeah it, it was it was pretty bonkers i've never yeah. had anything like that that's, like um that's for fun. yeah <laughs> i do play myself down a little bit <laughs> absolutely well there, there's me in the Wait. left so um i used to sell actually these machines called lades and i just got me kind of into business and i was doing pharmacy deliveries for my father and i decided i want to do something different so i started selling on amazon in 2018 a few years ago now um, and I actually built that into a six-figure global Amazon store selling private label products, continue to sell products to this day. And also like Alex, consult multiple seven-figure companies, myself and himself do, that sell globally around the world. And I'm very passionate about entrepreneurship and about business and about just improving oneself every day. So there it is. And there's me standing in a pile of products of mine that I'm selling there, looking proud as punch. So yeah, like we just said, we were, you know, before 2018, we were both just doing, you know, trading time for money in a nine to five job like a lot of people do. And the, for speaking from experience, I almost felt quite pissed off with, with like what was going on because I could see a lot of people who I was consuming information from who were doing really well, you know, living this this dream lifestyle. And I was a bit like, how are these people actually doing it? How are they succeeding big? Um, and wondering how they were doing it. Um, and since starting you know, venturing into this online world like 10 years ago, I've tried so many different things to, you know, make an income online. Some things have stuck and some things have failed miserably, as you'll see in a second. But yeah, that's basically pre-2018. pre, pre 2018. And then 2018 onwards, um, I we, me and Peter actually met at a, at a mutual company we both used to work at, which was uh, a training. It was a company that actually taught people how to sell on Amazon. And we both kind of learned the ropes through that and then kind of, you know, both went our separate ways. Um, I actually met Peter as a, as a, he was a sound engineer at one of these events. And then, so then since then, we've been working together with these bigger clients. And then right now, you know, what started as a side hustle is now a full-time income amongst many other things we get up to. And every day we're always continuing to learn and evolve. We've got multiple streams of passive, like hands-off income, where we don't actually have to do that much to keep them going. Um, in the last six months, we've launched Product Launch Ninja, which is really exciting for me and Peter. So here's some of our store results. And this isn't just to, this isn't, well, this is not to put us on a pedestal in here, but it's just more to show us like we've we've made money on Amazon. Like we we know what sells, how to find products, how to get them in, how to get them selling, how to scale it and everything in between. And just, yeah, these, these were, some of these results are literally made off a handful of products. Like we, we're not talking about selling loads of different types of products. These are just a handful of very select types of products that just sell really well, which we want to show you how to find in this little training. Um, and then these are some of our clients results. So you can see there's some quite big numbers that we've helped these guys achieve. And we've basically helped these clients expand from one marketplace into multiple marketplaces on specifically on Amazon, which is really simple to do no matter where you're starting from so is amazon for you okay now these are a couple of bullet points i've put in just to like almost 
make sure this is the sort of thing you want to get into. And for me, if you're new to the online business world and you put off by the bad advice you see, and this is again from experience, I've seen a lot of people spouting different types of advice and I'm promising so much to people. And I just don't think it was right. I just, just didn't really sit, sit with me. So this is why I put this in here. And maybe you've tried to make money online before. Maybe it hasn't worked out for you. This could be for you. Um, maybe you're interested in building a truly stable online business based on real business principles. Because a lot of people seem to think that building an Amazon business is like a, you know, a, not not a not a, not like a real business like building a brick and mortar store. But this is actually a very legit business, as you'll see. And depending on what you want to make, you could make a few hundred extra pounds a month, a couple of grand a month. Or you could just scale it up completely and go to the moon with it. Like Amazon has the capabilities of doing all of this. And you want to build a business that doesn't include you being the face of the business. So obviously with my YouTube channel, I have to be, you know, I am the I am the main character of that channel. So I have to show up and I've developed confidence over the past few years with that. But obviously with an Amazon business, you can kind of literally sit behind the scenes. You don't have to be the face of the business. Nobody has to know who you are, which is kind of appealing to some people. And you want something truly sustainable can actually run and you can build it in the back of your life like kind of effortlessly and it's a business that you can build that doesn't have a revenue ceiling and it doesn't tie your earnings to how much time you put in which is one of the main reasons i started in the first place and for us well for me personally i think this is one of the best ways to get time freedom so time freedom is basically your ability to choose when and how you want to work without being restricted by a schedule okay so everyone wants a better quality of life and this kind of fits the bill so some truths about Amazon, okay? It is a complicated start and grow, provide you for all the correct steps. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. Yes, you can make money very fast with it, but what you'll see in this presentation, if you like to like just, just pull out the time scale of how long things will actually take to build a solid foundation on long-term businesses, you know? Because a lot of people seem to promise like these get-rich-quick schemes to get you into something and then you find like it disappears after a few months or it's some like weird hack or loophole that, isn't around for long and then you're on, you're on to the next thing and you're back at square one. And actually Amazon is actually made up of over 50% of third party sellers, like people like us on this call, like me and Peter are anything special. And a lot of people think that Amazon is actually Amazon selling their own products or it's just Amazon, but it's actually over 50% of third party sellers. Um, and this is kind of like building an, an unkillable passive income machine, because once you get these products up and running, there is minimal effort you need to put in other than making sure you stay, keep in stock. Okay. There is a little bit of upfront research and, you know, upfront work like with any business you put in to find the products. Once you've got those products, that's your work kind of done. And all you have to do is focus on just keeping the thing ticking over and keeping them in stock. And Amazon wants you to succeed. So the more you sell, the more you succeed, the more Amazon wins, the more customers on the platform, just a flywheel effect and things just keep getting bigger and bigger. So how to sell on Amazon the basics. You only need three things to sell on Amazon, okay? And I'm breaking this down to the absolute basics. You need a product to sell, you need an Amazon seller account, and you need a means of getting your product to your customer, which is going to be Amazon's FBA service, okay? Now, there are many different ways that you can make money on Amazon. And these are just the three main ones you may or may not have heard of, okay? And I've tried all three of these, as well as Peter as well. And you may have heard of retail arbitrage or tried it in the past. I'm not too sure where you guys have been with this. If you've, you know, let us know in the chat if you've tried any of these, if it's worked out for you or if you've heard of it. But retail arbitrage is basically where you go around to your local stores like Asda or Tesco's or, you know, wherever's local to you and you find discounted and clearance products and you scan them in an app on your phone and you see what they're selling for on Amazon. And obviously, if it's less expensive, you buy them and you resell them for a higher price on Amazon. And you make a profit. Drop shipping, you buy products directly from the manufacturer and then they ship those products directly to the customer. So that's great because you don't have to touch the products. And it sounds like a really, really good idea in hindsight, which it is and it isn't. And then there's private label, which is what me and Peter focus on, which is where you create your own product label and house brand. So which should you choose? Okay. So from experience, both me and Peter believe it's best to focus on the one that has been proven to be mm. most profitable and most scalable, which is private label. Now, like I said, we've tried and tested these models over and over again, and private label has always come on top. So I'll just show you some tests or experiments that we've tried, or I've, I've tried actually. So this is the first one that I personally tried um, just before COVID started, right? And this is um, 
when everyone was locked down in their houses and stuff and fitness and health was like a big thing, everyone wanted to make sure they stayed fit. I started deciding to, I wanted to make more money online and I wanted to start building some more income streams. So I started, right. I found a drop shipping course and followed it to the T and I ended up bringing in these two exact products, which is a wall mounted pull up bar and a adjustable flat weight bench. And I was making money, okay? I was selling these primarily in the USA, and they were selling like crazy, okay? This is just some of the results. It was making up to a grand, a grand and a half a day with practically me not really doing anything. I was literally running Google ads to uh, a Shopify website and was making decent money. And I'd never seen, previous to this, I'd never really seen money like this. I was like, wow, this is absolutely amazing. The profit margins were really good. The only problem came was when, the supplier either ran out of stock or, oh, well, yeah, they, when they ran out of stock and I couldn't find suppliers to fulfill my orders. So obviously I was getting all these orders coming in, but then couldn't fulfill them. So I had to re refund a ton of customers, which was an absolute nightmare. And then, you know, I lost a ton of money on that. Um, still, still made some money, but it wasn't sustainable, put it that way. Um, so yeah, it was a problem. I didn't have any control of the stock it was all down to the manufacturer and what, what they were doing it was always constant hassle trying to find new suppliers i was I'm not even joking i was literally stressed out every day dealing with customers who were like angry that their products hadn't turned up within like two days and i ended up refunding a ton of customers so then the next test came along so i've got a funny story behind this actually i'll share in a second so retail arbitrage i tried this and this is basically where you go to stores and you buy discount products and you sell on Amazon. So Peter actually flew over to Edinburgh one day to meet me for a meeting. And on the way to the airport, I said, let's just jump into this supermarket. And we'll do some retail arbitrage on the way to the airport. And we found, and Peter actually spotted these Britain like water filters that were on the top shelf in, in Asda somewhere. And I, we were scanning these products and it was, we almost thought it was like a mistake or something, but we, we found about 20 or 30 of these products that were selling for one pound 50 and yet they were selling on Amazon for like 14 or 15 pounds. So we bought loads of them. I picked it off at the airport and I carried on going around these supermarkets and we found tons of products. Well, I found tons of products and made a, made a really good chunk of money. And as you can see, it's just, you know, just shows the profit you can make on these single items, uh, which was all again, great in hindsight. Um, again, there was many problems. Um, <laughs> I could only buy whatever I could find in the stores. Okay. So stock again was an issue. It was out of my control. I had to use a ton of my own time, my own fuel driving around to find these products. And I was kind of limited to where I lived because I didn't really want to spend hours driving around. It's not a very good use of my time. And then obviously once I had the products, I had to send them into Amazon myself, which I had to spend more, even more time, send, you know, packaging them up, which was a nightmare. And all these products sold super fast. So I ran out of stock really fast, which is, again, a nightmare. There's two rules of Amazon, right? The first is finding a profitable product. And the second is literally just keeping the thing in stock. That's all you have to do is that it's real simple. But this didn't really pass the test of doing that. And then that leads with private label. And we've been doing private label now for about three or four years, like consistently. And we wanted to try these dropshipping and retail arbitrage tests on, on the side to see how they were going. And again, these are just some more stats I wanted to share, which just shows you how dominant Amazon is in the market. If you in case you're thinking that, oh, it's too saturated or it's, um, you know, it's what's the opportunity like, basically. You can see here, look at Amazon on the left there. It has over 40% of the market share compared to any other uh, e-commerce platform it's absolute it's a goliath it's massive and it is only continuing to get better and you can see on the on the let's see, move out over there you can see on the right there the the reasons people actually use internet um shopping on amazon and if you're probably like me you probably spend tons of money on prime because it's fast free shipping and there's a massive selection you can get everything on amazon it's a no-brainer so it is you it's time for you to take your slice of the pie and all starts with choosing the right products okay so I'm going to pass this over to Peter now, and we're going to actually jump in some of the meat of the training. Absolutely. Well, Alex, thank you so much. You really covered a lot there. So um, what I'm going to do now, folks, is I'm just going to go into more like the details of how you would do this. So how to uncover the exact products people are buying on Amazon in less than five minutes. Okay, Alex, next slide. What we do is, step number one, we download the AMZ seller browser, and it's completely free, Okay. And then we go to amazon.co.uk or .com or .de, wherever market you want to sell in. And you go to 
best sellers on the top left hand side. Okay. And then we actually have a look at a subcategory because there's Amazon is made up of categories, right? So there's primary categories like home and home and kitchen or garden or out sports and outdoors or um garden and there's a lot of different primary categories and within them there's subcategories. So every product, if you look at it, it's kind of like a like a pyramid upside down. It'll eventually whittle down to the product inside a wee subcategory. Okay. So we scroll to a subcategory and we notice the best seller rank. So what the best seller rank is that shows how popular an item is on Amazon. So we can see here, for example, this product, this uh, subcategory here, which is inside pet supplies, inside dogs, under doors, gates, and ramps. And we could go lower, but we just left it at that. You can see the most popular door, gate, and ramp on Amazon UK is this one here. Now it's number 67 in a, another category, prime or in baby products. But it just shows you that's the 67th most popular item for baby products on Amazon UK. Okay. So next slide. This tells us, no, this part, this explains it nicely. So BSR tells us the sales velocity of a product. So BSR of one, it's selling a ton. Like number one is the most popular. BSR of 10,000 is selling a fair bit. The BSR of 50,000, it's selling a few. But all these are category dependent because some categories are you know, they have more products and they have more sales, which means that a BSR of one in home and kitchen could be twice a BSR of one in sports and outdoors, for example. But still, BSR of one is very good. But we're not looking for that exactly because that's too competitive. But this means we can quickly and accurately identify the products people are buying right now on Amazon. But look on the next slide. Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it's selling... It's selling now, but I hear you're like, will it continue to sell? Because, you know, if something's selling a really good BSR now, you'd be like, mm, ground, but we need to look at a bigger picture because that could just be today. We need to see what it's done in the past. So we use a tool called Keepa, okay? And this examines a product's past history. And this is really, I really love this tool, okay? So on the next slide here, um, this is what it shows you, right? So at the top there, you can see sales price. So we want to see, ideally a nice consistent price. So we can see this product here that was we took a screenshot of. It's been set at roughly £114.95 for the past year. So nice and consistent. If that price was going up and down, up and down, that means there's a lot of like um, price changes for the product, which means like we can't say, look, this is what it's going to sell at accurately going forward because it's just changing so much. And why is it changing so much? You'd probably think they're trying to drive up demand. But this is nice and consistent, which means brilliant price is steady right and then if we look down at sales rank we can see the bsr now we can look at the bsr in the past and we look at the bsr in the in the present you can see the bsr starts moving a little bit bigger and um, bigger changes in that and that means it's fluctuating a little bit more but still the bsr in that product is still very low that is 243 in luggage which means it's the 243 most popular item on luggage on amazon uk and it's number 23 in carry-on so there's still a fair demand for that product and we can see the demand is fairly steady. And then down the very bottom, it's just interesting. Now it doesn't apply to us as such with private label, but we can see that there's seven offers available on Tuesday, May 5th. So it just gives us an idea of how many people are competing for that product. But when you do private label, there's an offer of one because this is your product, your brand, your label. So with all this, we now know how to find products people are already buying. And we also know the price history to know that they will continue to sell in the future. And we can see the demands. So we have the price and the demands. So we can make accurate predictions about what's going to happen. So what makes a good product? So a good product, in our view, is simple to manufacture. So not many moving parts. You'll see my very first product now very soon. And you'll be like, that is so simple. That is so boring. And it's, it's both of those things. And you'll understand why I mean simple to manufacture. It has a BSR, BSR score of between 10 and 30,000 because if it's lower than 10,000 all the time, that means there's a lot of a lot of potentially competition for that item and a lot of people are kind of hunting for it. Like there's a lot of demand. Whereas between 10 and 30,000, maybe even slightly above and slightly less, you know, it's an art. It's not completely a science, but there would be less competition, which means that, you know, you can fit into that market nice and handy and make sales, take a slice of the pie, okay? There's no more than five other sellers. And what I mean by that is there's no more than five competing items 
for that product on Amazon that we're directly competing with, because that means if there's good demand for those items already, and you come in with a better offer, better fulfillment or better images and better, you know, better everything. We like to build a really good offer all overall. And um, we are much more likely to take the sales. Where if there's a hundred, like for example, you start selling water bottles, and there'd be hundreds, if not thousands of water bottles. It's very hard for you as a new seller and with a new product to really stand out and, and compete. Whereas if there's only five, you know, you're you're already at the races. Um, easy to manufacture. So like, yeah, same as simple to manufacture. It's it's easy to make, you know, nearly as if it doesn't need instructions, okay? Again, we don't want our items to be electronic. So if you think about electronic stuff, if it's not, you know, it's likely to break. First of all, there's a lot more to go wrong. You know, if it's sitting around for a little while or moving in transit, it's likely to break. Also, people in like here, UK and Ireland, we use 220 volt. We have a certain plug in Europe, you know, on in Germany or France, they have a different plug. And I think they have a different one in Spain. If you're in the US, Canada, they have different plugs again. Australia is different again, which means suddenly we need lots of SKUs and we might need to order like 100 or 200 or 300 units of that item for that one marketplace. And it mightn't really work as well in one marketplace as it does in another. And, you know, it's just not easy to simply test and expand globally with a, with a product that needs lots of variations in terms of electric. So that's one of the reasons why we don't go for electric. And then the final thing, and this is, you know, you'll understand, it has to be profitable. There's no point bringing in a product that, you know, is brilliant, sells a lot, but makes us no money. That's no good. It has to be profitable. So this is where it gets exciting. Guys, I'm going to open it up to you, right? And um, this was my very first product, and I don't think I shared this anywhere. So what do you think it is? I'll give you a little hint. It's in the pet space but it is very simple to manufacture. So guys, I'll leave it over to you. If you want to shout out or you want to put it into the chat, um, over to you guys. And it's and it's in the dog category. Well, Alex, no give me a hint. I would, I would have left it. Oh, place. hang on. What did, what did Tom just say then? The whistle. Oh my Tom, God. Dog whistle. You are the first man <laughs> to guess correctly. Well done, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, I think we can go to the next slide. There it is. <laughs> Dog whistles. That was my very first product, right? Um, and my great, uh, well, actually jumping on there, that, that made me £2,271.43 in its first month, selling on Amazon UK. Now, conservatively in the UK, that sold £75,000 to date. I couldn't go back on Amazon far enough to be able to get all the accurate figures, but I'd say it's more. And it sold like tens of thousands of dollars in the US as well, in Canada. And that's just one product, right? And um, my great, my great improvement on that product was actually just looking at the market and actually just saying, hold on, everyone's selling a single pack. I'm just going to sell a twin pack, a double pack of that. And it was a great little product because whilst I, um, like all my products basically come in via container or less container load, which we'll talk about later. And um, the dog whistles actually come in via air freight, which means we get them really, really quick and send them all over the world that way. Um, but that was my that was my change. That's the change I made to it. So imagine if you had two or three or perhaps more of these products, how would that change your life? Like really, like that one simple product, it did change my life. Like it put me on a completely different direction. And um, but we'll come back to this in a second. Alex is going to run through that. So once you've uncovered a product like I did, right? How do you create your own version of a winning product and outsell your competition? I kind of give you a hint on what I did, but there's lots of other things you can do as well to be even better and protect yourself more. So the step for this is step one, search Amazon for a product you would consider. Now I'm at a standing desk, so I just said standing desks, but reality is um, I wouldn't recommend selling standing desks, but I typed in standing desks. And then we navigate to the one, two or three star reviews and highlight the text or note them down. So basically this is a negative review. And the reason we go to negative and not necessarily the positive, or we, we but we, we could apply this a method to the positives as well, but for a different reason. We go to the negatives because we want to basically work out what is causing people to say this is a bad product. Because generally in here, if you can solve all these problems, or at least the majority of them for the consumer, you're going to get really good reviews and your product is going to float to the top, right? And some of these things we won't be able to solve, but some of them we'll be able to address relatively simply. Um, and therefore, you know, you know, why not do it if it's costing us next to nothing or perhaps nothing at all to solve all these problems. So we take these reviews 
and we paste them into ChatGBT with the following script. Now, ChatGBT wasn't around when we started, but it actually makes this job much easier. So what I do is I ask ChatGPT to summarize this text and highlight the improvements I should make to this product or to the product to avoid negative feedback in bullet point format. So when I do that, ChatGPT basically very quickly gives me this, which shows me what is wrong. So the product arrived damaged or faulty, screw holes not aligned, cracked wood, motor stopped working. Motor stopped working, that shows you electrics, guys. That's just a proof of why you shouldn't have electrics. Um, let me see, wobbly, unstable. So improvements that can be made, you know, better quality control than product arise without any defects or damages. So what we can do, better boxes, thicker, thicker cardboard, right? Improve customer service to facilitate returns. Well, that is actually Amazon's responsibility. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. And the, the person that was selling that product could actually ask Amazon to remove that review and um, because that doesn't apply. Um, addressing the stability and wobbly issues by improving the desk design and structure to provide better support and stability for users of different heights. So perhaps we could do something there. This just gives us an idea of the things that we should try and address. Like, And straight away, number one, we can address that by just maybe having an outer carton and a near carton. There you are. The, the item is much less likely to get damaged. So once we've done all that, we can paste the following into ChatGPT with the following script, right? Create a template outreach email for my private label company seeking to source a reliable long-term supplier for this product. There's a hint there, guys. Chinese suppliers love the idea of a reliable long-term relationship. Um, request the supplier provide me with free onboard pricing. Free onboard means the supplier is responsible for everything to do with getting the goods to the ship, okay? Exact carton dimensions and minimum order terms, in including the cost for a sample unit delivered duty paid. So we, we always like to get a sample of the product because there's multiple suppliers, like hundreds potentially, but there's multiple suppliers in China, that's what we usually deal with, selling the same product. And we just want to make sure we're, or manufacturing the same product, depending on, and we just want to make sure that the quality is there, which means we have to generally get a sample before we order. Um, I've never ordered an item without getting a sample. And generally that, is, that has served me and I know it served Alex very well in the past to avoid potential issues, at least reduce them greatly. So in order to do that, we go to Alibaba. That's a, it's a, it's one of the many websites for finding suppliers are probably the best known and the one I would always use. And we identify multiple suppliers in this case for the standing desk. And we use in the outreach letter contact potential suppliers. And we actually have other outreach letters as well, which we can provide, but in general, ChatGPT does a very good job once you put in the right questions. We try to identify suppliers. Sorry, Alex, if you go back there one second. We try to identify suppliers that have been on Alibaba for a number of years. That just gives us a little bit more protection in terms of like, you know, they're not only there two months. I'm not saying there'd be anything wrong with them, but just the longer they're there, the better it is. Um, but don't be worried about scams on Alibaba. Like, you know, if you just do your job right and just look at the suppliers, look at the reviews, um, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. Okay, so next slide. Then using the, once we get information back from the supplier, we can use the Amazon fee calculator to identify profit margins, right? So we can put in our exact costings into this calculator and we will know exactly what will be left after Amazon does all its thing with the product. Um, and also it's worth bearing in mind, we have another calculator that will um, allow us to input all our information. So we know exactly what it's costing us along every step of the way. So we can be sure of profitability before we order an item. You know, it needs to be profitable. That's what we said earlier on, right? So with all this, we now have an exact, we have exact pricing and an improved version of a high demand product already selling on Amazon. And that that is really key here, folks. If you can do that every time, it means that you will have success. This means we never risk buying a product before we know it's gonna sell because we've looked at it with Keepa, we've looked at it with BSR history, pricing history. So we know that product is gonna sell. Like we know there's gonna be no surprises in that way. We know it's gonna be profitable before we place an order because we know the price it's selling at for the past, you know, 12 months, 24 months, you know, 56 months, whatever it is, we know what the price is. So we know like, you know, where we can come in in the market, maybe more, maybe less, or not less, but we know where we're at, okay? We know we can make a profit at that price minimum. We know there's already a high demand for the product because we look at the BSRs. And this is where things get exciting. So next slide there, Alex. How to sell your products globally without expensive warehousing or staff. And this is the real magic of Amazon, guys, because if you think about it, when, you know, years ago, um, I'm not even going to say, look, this has kind of been around for the last number of years, but it's getting better all the time and they're really expanding. But how e-commerce used to work, you had to handle everything yourself, you know? So if you were a, a, a retailer in, in Dublin, Ireland, or in Leeds, or in, outside Glasgow, 
and you want to sell globally, um, I don't even know how I go about it. It was 15 years ago. Um, but basically, you'd handle everything yourself from storing the products to shipping, customer service. The whole lot was your responsibility. And that meant that it was really only the really mega companies could actually even think about doing this, right? Or used to find like a regional distributor in a sep in one country and get them to handle everything, but they might not handle the same as another country. And it just, it's a bit messy, right? It was also hard to reach a large audience where I'd spend a lot of money on marketing, like newspapers, you know, translations, um, you know, all this. It just it was not as easy as as it is actually now. And smaller retailers, as I said, just struggled to compete with the larger ones. It just it just nearly wasn't possible. And that's why people didn't do it, right? But then Amazon FBA came along and this really changed the game, right? So you may not be aware, but one of the services that Amazon provided, it's, it's like, it's the core service, right? And this is like, this really is the secret to their success. You can use Amazon services to store and ship your products and handle your customer services, which means that they will receive the item, they will put it on a shelf, and then when a consumer buys it, they will take it down, they'll wrap it in a box, they'll put the consumer's label on it, and they'll ship it out at really, really good rates. Like, you couldn't do it yourself. And like, you think about it, okay, one or two items a day, I could do it myself. But then, you know, suddenly you're selling 20, 30, 40, 50 in, in then multiple countries. There's no way you could do this yourself, like from, from your home. Like it just wouldn't be possible, right? And um, But Amazon will do it. And this means that you free up your time to focus on other parts of your business. So like product research, um, which is absolutely vital. It's kind of like the lifeblood, really. And then Amazon has a large consumer base. So it's easier for you to reach that wider audience. So think about it. When someone's buying off Amazon, right, you don't have to earn their trust. All we need to do is create an amazing offer, amazing product, um, and just make it look its best. And somebody's already an Amazon customer, so it's just like two clicks and they've ordered the item. And um, it's not like, oh, is this dodgy? Or what, what happens if something goes wrong? Like they, they have complete trust in Amazon. So you don't have to break down that barrier. It's already done for you. It's already won, right? And now you can compete more easily with larger brands, even Amazon themselves. Yeah, you on Amazon can compete with Amazon. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. Like, And they don't, they don't really mind because they're making money all, all the way anyway. Now, we have to really update this picture. Um, we said that last week. I did, yeah, I did, yeah. But it really <laughs> do, right? So this is the inside of an Amazon FBA center about 300 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> now, as Alex said um, before, it, like, to be honest with you, it'd be robots. Um, that's just books. There'd be a lot more than books there. Um, and it'd be much, much bigger. But this just gives you an idea. Like, they show tens of thousands of products, millions of products. And as of 2023, there's 175 Amazon fulfillment centers around the world. I remember um, giving a presentation about four years ago now, and I remember that there's only 93 Amazon fulfillment centers. Now look at it, and this picture is not accurate by any stretch of the imagination, but it gives you an idea of the markets, right? So you look there, you've got the US, you've got Canada, you've got the UK, you got Europe, you've got Australia. Um, there's so many different markets, and you can expand to more if you want, but like that's, if you think about the English-speaking or the European markets, like, you know, they're there for the taking straight away. like, And that can all be done from your home, wherever you are. Okay. So in order to take advantage of Amazon's logistic, logistic services, right? Once we've identified a product, right? Once we said, look, this is the product, you know, it's going to be profitable. It, it will work. We've seen the history of it. You know, we're standing out in the market. There's only maybe, you know, five uh, competing products and they're all selling, you know, I can get in there and get a slice of that pie. And um, we need to create an Amazon Seller Central account um, in our company name and we create a Amazon product listing, right? And then we use something called Amazon Global Logistics, okay? So before when we were doing this, right? And you can still do it the other way, but this is just making it much easier, right? We used to use like freight forwarders to get the product from China into Amazon, right? And that was grand, but there was a lot of moving parts in terms of like dealing with freight forwarders, dealing with your supplier, dealing with customs, VAT, and so many other things, right? And then getting the products to Amazon, right? Whereas now we can use Amazon's portal inside our Seller Central dashboard, right? To generate a price to get that product moved from China to the UK. In this case, I believe this is for, I think it's for a hundred units um, of product, right? A pallet size to get it from China to I think it's Liverpool in the UK, £151.84. Like that is crazy. It was costing me more to get goods from Northern Ireland into um, Liverpool. So it just gives you an idea. Like it, their logistics are amazing, right? And this means we can ship our products directly to Amazon FBA centers around the world without ever touching the products. Because think about it, right? Sometimes we ship the products 
to ourselves or to our storage facility. But we have to go out and we have to handle those goods. Like say if it's in the UK, right? We can handle those goods. We can actually, you know, move them around and package them up and do different things with them, right? But that's not exactly fully passive, but it also means that there's another leg in the journey for the product. So it, it arrives, say, in in my case, I send I send some goods to Northern Ireland at times. And they, it has to arrive in Northern Ireland, which is going to cost me more. It then has to be packaged up. And whilst Amazon gives me really good rates to get the products from my storage facility into Liverpool or wherever in GB, the problem is, is that I have to pay for that. Whereas if I send those goods straight to Amazon, right, and I know they're going to sell, I take away that that part of the journey. The goods are in stock quicker and it's actually much more competitive. And yes, I might pay a little bit more in storage, but overall, it's better if the goods in stock and it's it's more competitive in general. So that's something that we really need to really need to focus on, and that really does make a huge difference, right? So Alex, let's just kind of just sort of touch on the idea of multiple countries because I think that's really important because sometimes we think about just selling in in one country, one market, because that's where we live or that's where we're we're near. But the reality is why sell in one country when you can sell in multiple countries? And Amazon actually makes it really easy to do that with your nice, simple, boring product. Alex, over to you. Yeah. So like Pete was just saying, um, the FBA program literally makes it stone dead simple to expand into all these different markets. Like it's not complicated at all. And I'll show you now just what the real power and the magic is in Amazon. So it's all one good selling one product, like Peter said, but you may as well take advantage of multiple markets. And we said before that it was over hundred marketplaces on Amazon, right? But you don't have to sell in every single one of them. The main marketplaces, both me and Peter have sold in are mainly the UK, USA, Canada, Australia, and Europe. They're the main five places. Well, obviously you'd obviously get maybe, I think there's about eight or nine countries in within Europe. You can more sell now, in maybe, Alex, they're adding all the yeah, time. more. So there's there's those, but you don't you don't have to expand into you know United Arab Emirates or into China or into the Middle East. You can if you want, but for me, I would focus on the big the big players first, which are basically probably where you are. You guys are all based in the UK, and then expand out to the USA and Canada, and slowly scale from there. So let's just break this down because this is really cool. Um, how to make three thousand seven hundred fifty pound a month with one single product? Okay, I know we said before with Peter's product, and we showed that, but this is just to break down some of the numbers, just to give it, get the the creative juices flowing. So let's just say, for example, you had a a retail price product that was selling for twenty five pounds in one marketplace, and you were making five pounds profit on every single sale. So it's twenty percent margin, which is super conservative. And the best results I've ever had on selling on products on Amazon have been a sweet spot in price of between about twenty pounds and fifty pounds, because I think that is still kind of an impulse buy for most people, which is great for us. Okay, so obviously you can sell products on Amazon that are way more expensive, but for this example, we'll stick with twenty five pounds. So if you sold one product in one single marketplace and you made five sales a day, right, which is real conservative to do considering how many millions of people shop on Amazon. And obviously when you choose the right product that has high demand and low competition, like we talked about before, these are the sorts of numbers you're looking at. Okay. So 25 pound profit and about 125 pounds in revenue, which is one product, one marketplace, five units a day, which is super conservative. Let's now look at this. Okay. Let's just say we had that same one product and we expanded into just five marketplaces. So let's just say we had stock in Germany, which would fulfill a few countries in Europe, the UK, USA, Canada, you just sell it in five marketplaces. The jump in revenue goes to 625 and your profit in your pocket goes to 125. Okay. This is just in a single day. Now, if we extrapolate that over a month, one product, one market, five sales a day, £3,750 revenue, £750 of profit in your pocket. Right. Now, you don't have to do any more work. Okay to well near enough anymore work once you've got the products into these other marketplaces watch how much this jumps up okay this is one product five marketplaces five units a day that's three thousand seven fifty pounds in your pocket or eighteen thousand seven fifty pound in revenue and again these are these are you can't argue with the maths and these are super conservative numbers and like we said before if you started to add in one two four six eight products into this like you can see how fast this business can grow without you really having to reinvest like money out of your own pocket into this. I mean, you could do to grow the business faster or you could literally use the profit off one product to fund your next product and so on. It's almost like it keeps spawning new products, which is how I built my business. Um, But yeah, there is still, you know, there as, as much as we've harped on about how good Amazon is, there's still problems, right? And these are 
a lot of these came from the questions and comments I've been getting on TikTok. Okay. And you can see that most people quit before they actually put in enough work. Like most people are literally trying to look for shiny objects. They want something that will give them like instantaneous results. They want to make this massive business like tomorrow. But in hindsight, anything good takes a little bit of time to build the foundations, to find the right products. And then once you're up and running and you start building all these little products that are like mini flywheels in your business, that's where things start to scale and you can let off the gas a little bit. Okay. But a lot of people don't get that far to actually reach that point. Like I said, yeah, everyone chases shiny objects and then looking for the next money-making thing. So again, if you just go and scroll through TikTok, Instagram, whatever, and you are specifically looking for things to make an income or money, I guarantee you have seen so many different ways that people are trying to get you to try. And most of them probably will work, if I'm honest with you. There's a lot of things that do work. Um, but the same principle applies to all of them. You have to stick them out and actually follow through and keep doing it over and over and over and over again. There aren't many things that you can literally, well, let's just say, for example, that there's one example I would give, which is super risky, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. If you put money into like one of these crappy crypto coins that actually went, you know, crazy and you put your money in at exactly the right time and took it out at exactly the right time. Yeah, sure. You can make thousand percent gains on your money, but the, the actual percentage chance of that happening is like so slim. It's ridiculous. I would much rather focus on things that I can actually control and build something up in the back of my life that would actually make a difference and give me that time freedom we were looking for. Um, yeah, build a business around you. Build a business around your life and you gives you the ultimate freedom. Okay, that's, that's not really a problem, but this is just the things that come of making something and building something for the long term. And maybe you need something that gets you off that nine to five pounds wheel. So a lot of people who have been on the trainings like this with us, you know, there's some people that want to start this in their spare time for fun. There's other people that are literally sick and tired of what they're doing. They want another way out. Um, and like me and Peter said at the start, for us, this actually started as like a side hustle or a thing we did on the side in our spare time to now where we're actually doing this full time and then showing other people how to do the same. Um, and just again, just almost, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but you want to build the principles and the foundations to build a real business that can be built in the background of your life over the next three, six months. And I remember I said before about extrapolating the time out a little bit. I'm just being completely realistic, right? If somebody is trying to get you to join whatever they're selling or to showing you that you can make money on Amazon in the next week or two, I would be very skeptical. Um, you might be able to make a quick bit of money, but I guarantee you it's not sustainable and you'll be chasing your tail trying to make it work. Um, so, these are these are basically the steps to selling on Amazon, okay? Broken down from a super high level, right? We want to find products that are high in demand with low competition. So we went through that a little bit on this training. We showed you like, the literally the, those are the tool tools that we use. There's a lot of people that will recommend that you use tools like Jungle Scout or Helium 10, which I, I don't know about you, Pete, but I've never used that. And every time I've tried to use it, it's come up with completely random bits of data, which I can't really trust. I'd well, rather... Funny. I was going to say, I'd, I would rather have a bit more of a manual research process and use my actual savvy and learn how to find products properly than just trying to go onto a piece of software that every other person on planet Earth is trying to use and punch in a few numbers and think, all right, that's the product, I'll go and sell it because I guarantee you it will be overly competitive and you will be very upset. Well, it's funny um, you should say that. I didn't even think I mentioned this. Uh, someone messaged me on TikTok um, probably two weeks ago and he was like, just asked me lots of questions and I was, I was answering them. And he said, I was using Jungle Scout and I spent, you know, I bought a product basically for a couple of thousand and it's not selling and Jungle Scout's numbers were wrong. And I think that's key. Like, you know, you don't want to be just trusting a product. You want to be trusting your the market. You want to be letting the market tell you what to do, the market tell you what to sell. You don't want to be saying, oh, there's a product, I'm going to sell that. No, you need to examine things and say, look, based on these figures, based on this data, you know, based on this history, I can make a very calculated risk. Everything's a risk, but I can make a very calculated, educated decision that this product is worth proceeding with. Um, and I don't think you get that with some of those products. So really what the tools we use just show you the pure data and let you make the decision. In fact, let me just, this is the off topic now, guys, but I, we haven't done this before, but I, I just wanted to show you, I should just show you quickly. Um, can you still see my screen? Yeah, yeah. Right. If I just go to Amazon now, I'll show you an example of a good product. Okay. Um, can you guys see my Amazon screen now? Yeah, we can see it, Alex. Yeah. Right. 
let me just show you this product, right? Okay. This is a caravan cargo bar, right? And when we're doing product research, right? I'm, again, I'm not recommending you go and sell this product. I'm just, I'm just saying I've come across this before and thought that's interesting. Um, so caravan cargo bar. Okay, where are we going? Yeah, right. So caravan cargo bar. If we look at the actual market here, right, for the caravan cargo bars, there aren't many caravan cargo bars. Selling. We've got this product here, right, which is, I'll tell you right now, this is the most ridiculous product image I've ever seen. It looks like it's been What's shot for on. Sale? Gold. Yeah, what you don't even know what's for sale. Um, and it's actually against Amazon's terms of service to have an image like this. You need a, a plain white background showing your image, but you don't even know what's for sale here. Like it's a telescopic cargo, but you have to really look at the picture to see what it is, right? That's one product we're selling. Here's another one by the same brand, Malenko. This is like a really popular motorhome caravan brand. They're very, very big in Europe and UK. Okay. And there's this product here. This is another one, okay, which is slightly better. All three of these products are selling. And I've looked into this market. And there is literally no other sellers. There's these three products, right? Now, if we go into this, in fact, let me just backtrack a second. This is the this is what we want to see in a market, right? So when we're saying low competition, we want maybe two or three or as little as possible competition. Um, we, we want competition there because it shows us that there is demand for a product, okay? We don't want to try and reinvent the wheel and come up with a new product either. We want to basically come into the market, find what's already selling, um that hasn't got much competition and then go and make a better version of it that's basically what private label boils down to okay so there's a lot of people on who contact contacts on tiktok and they, i think they maybe get a little bit confused as to which type of business model they want to actually pursue but we we primarily focus on private label so let me just jump into this product listing i'll just show you a few things and again this product is selling really well and it is absolute garbage as in the actual listing is absolute crap. Like it's got one image, right? Ideally, we'd like to see maybe five or six images showing the product in use, showing all the features of the product and really giving the customer like an actual feel for the product. Okay. And that's what's going to tempt them to go and click this buy button. The, the bullet points here, they are not detailed at all. Okay. Right. If, if that was me writing this, I would e expand on each of these just to give the customer a little bit more, like what is a lot, like what does... What is the benefit of having a large pad? Okay. What is this like in a caravan? What is a secure fit going to do for the customer? Um, these sorts of things. The title as well. Literally, the title doesn't really have, it's got the, I guess it's got the, the target keyword and key phrase in there, but you could definitely make this better. It's got some great reviews. Again, we could go into this and look at the few three star reviews it has, but it's a fairly good product. And we can see here on the right here, this is dispatched and sold by iShop 24-7, which is not fulfilled by Amazon, which is what we were talking about before. So just by coming into a market like this that doesn't take advantage of Prime, has an absolute crap listing, it's very easy to stand out in a market like this, okay? If you came in, you had a good product, you were selling, I, I, I guarantee you would make sales in a market like this. Again, I'm not saying go and sell this product. I'm just saying this is kind of what we've looked for. Whereas if we said, right, I want to go and sell a water bottle, which is a lot, what a lot of people seem to think they want to sell. There's over 2,000 results for, that, for, that come up for the search water bottle, right? Now, as a customer coming onto here, there's no possible way that like a customer comes onto here and knows exactly what they want in terms of like, look how confused this is. We've got different colors. We've got different brands, different sizes, different shapes. This is a very confused marketplace compared to what we just looked at, right? And usually when customers come on here for a water bottle, I, I guess most people would come on knowing what they want to buy. <clears throat> so they would search maybe for a brand name like Iron Flask or something. Other than that, as a new seller, this is going to be almost impossible to get your product in here and notice. Like there's no way you would somehow get to the top of this these search results without using so much money on advertising and, and PPC. It would almost be impossible. Look at this, number 22 in Sports and Outdoor. That, I guarantee, is selling hundreds every single day, right? Number 12, that is, that's the 12th best-selling product in Sports and Outdoor right now. That is, I wouldn't even have found to think how many that is selling. Um, it's crazy. Um, so th that's just, to, I'm just going back to the presentation now, but, you know, sometimes we say, yeah, sell high demand, low competition products. So I thought I'd just show that just to show you like, right, this is what we're looking for. And when we're doing product research, 
we want the segue down to these subcategories to get to where the goal is. So once you find one product or one type of product, you'll find other products around it if you know what you're looking for. And then, like we said, you want to analyze the sales history using the Keeper app, which is what we always would use and recommend. There are there are a lot of tools out there that people would recommend, like Jungle Scout and Helium 10 and all sorts of others. But honestly, you don't need to go and waste your money on stuff like that. I personally don't think anyway. They're just shiny objects. Keeper's really good because it gives you a really detailed look at the sales history, what the selling price is, its BSR, and you can make a really good decision based on that. You then want to go to Alibaba, like we said, find a quality supplier. So what is a quality supplier? So a quality supplier, you want a supplier that's been in business for over like five years. If you find a supplier that's only been in business one or two years, it's going to be a nightmare. Trust me. You may get your products, but they may arrive damaged. They may arrive in a different state than you actually ask for them for. If you have a supplier who's worked with e-commerce business owners for five plus years, they know what you're looking for. And they're, they're like Peter said before, they want to be helpful. They want to work with you longer term and you'll that's what you'll notice when you work with chinese suppliers they i don't know if it's something in their values as a country as a culture but they always want to go the extra mile like i've had they, they want to exchange things via what's they always want your what's not always but I've, I've actually got some suppliers on whatsapp and they'll message me to ask how like my mountain biking is doing and stuff like that so relationships do get built and obviously if you can build a good relationship with a supplier the better price you'll get the the, the more they'll look after you and so on you then want to order samples and determine your profitability. So these are all almost like check boxes that we work through. And all we do when we find products, we're working through a system and we're trying to rule products out. And the only way we rule products out is if they don't pass these tests. So, but, so if you get a product and the sample is good and it's profitable and it's got proven demand, low competition, it stays in and it goes to the next stage. Okay. If it doesn't pass any of those tests, we automatically rule it out. And your goal is always just to focus on trying to rule products out. But if it gets to the point where you're ready to bring it in, then you, you may be at a point where you have to cherry pick what the best product is to, to go forward with. And then we want to open your Seller Central account. So a lot of people seem to think that you have to open a Seller Central account like on day one. But I personally would not do that. I personally would get the ball rolling first with finding a product and a supplier. And then once that is, you've got the wheels in motion for that, then start looking at opening your Seller Central account because you'll be charged from day one for a membership you're not even going to be using just yet. Whereas if you wait until you've got a product and you start manufacturing it, then you're going to be just saving yourself a little bit of money. It may not be important to you, but some people say you need to open it from day one. It can take like four to six weeks to open a Seller Central account, maybe even less. I think mine took maybe a week or two for Amazon to verify it, but it's not too long. Um, and some, some people want... are done on two days. It just depends. Yeah, yeah. Um, then you want to order a small batch and maybe between 100 and 500 units of a product. And then you want to send those products directly into Amazon. And this is like a test order. OK, so we want to sell these products, even if we have to get these products a slightly higher price per unit. We just want to test them quickly so we know that they sell and then we can start increasing our order sizes, which obviously then will get us better pricing from the supplier and you can scale from there. And then we create product listings that convert browsers into buyers. So again, like we just went through on that little example, you want high quality photos, titles and bullets with keywords and key phrases. That's that's what makes people buy. OK, then if you want, again, it's not it's not essential, but you can use Amazon's PPC platform to put some money into advertising to boost sales. Now, I do use a bit of PPC when I launch. I use maybe five or 10 pounds a day just for Amazon to go out and find the keywords that people are actually using to search my product. And then from there, you can start putting more money into product, into keywords that people are actually searching and get rid of the ones that aren't making you any money. So that's how PPC works at a very high level. And then, like we said here, you can start looking at then scaling into the different marketplaces to grow your profits and maximizing the, the sales on your one product, okay? And it's, pretty, it's like crossing a bridge, Amazon FBA, okay? So if you've got a single plank missing, no matter how hard you try to cross a bridge, yes, okay, there's some people going to be, oh, I could just jump over that. But let's just say theoretically you couldn't cross the bridge no matter how hard you try, right? And the gaps are basically your unexpected so the, the bridge gap is basically your unexpected gaps in your knowledge nuances. And you can only far you can only go as far as your willingness to keep learning. This is this applies to anything. And you can never get enough knowledge. But the most important thing is to actually start walking across the bridge in the first place. Because there's a lot of people again on TikTok who will think about starting something, they'll plan about starting something. Whereas in fact, just like when you take the first step in doing this or doing anything, the next step kind of becomes illuminated. 
you don't need to have all your eggs lined up and all your ducks in the, in the whatever that saying is, all the ducks in a basket. Ducks in or a roll. Yeah, ducks in a row, that's it. You don't have to do that with this, right? It, it's good to get an overall picture of where you're headed and you have a roadmap to do it, which is what we created Product Launch Ninja for. But the most important step is that you just start walking, or in our case, start looking for products, start taking the steps to build this business, okay? So if you're ready to get serious about an Amazon FBA business and you want to make this much money every month or more, depending on what you want, three, five, 10 K a month, maybe less, maybe more, depending on what you want to earn out of an online business. And you want personalized mentoring support to get there. And you are actually ready to take control of your financial future. I'm just going to talk a little bit about Pro Launch Ninja, which is what we put together. It's not going to be for everyone, but we want to literally just have me and Peter as mentors and guides for people along this journey as we wanted when we first started. So Product Launch Ninja is something we've launched about six months ago now, and we have five or six clients in there, which doesn't sound much, but you know, it's growing slowly. And I think it's, this is where just we're before working. before you go in there, Alex, I think it's worth yeah. worth adding. Like we really enjoy like really we really enjoy sharing our knowledge with people and actually seeing them have success, having ahas, and just moving forward. Like, that's so that's what I really find exciting about this. I, I feel yeah. very fulfilled doing it. Like so yeah, I just want to Yeah, add definitely. You. Yeah. And and I know some people, but well, you've only got five or six people in your coach program. How can I know it's legit and this, that, and the other? Well, we, we showed you that me and Peter know what we're talking about, right? And right now, this is one of the best places it's been as a, as a coaching program because me and Peter have more time to allocate to work with students close from their business to get them actually launched. And yeah, we actually help these people with finding products, actually validating product ideas, telling them sell this, pro you know, go and get pricing on this specific product avoid this product because of these reasons and we're really teaching them how to become proper amazon sellers and helping them launch their first one two and three products or and beyond basically and this is what we've put inside product launch ninja okay and we're going to be changing this shortly and it's going to be more focused around the actual coaching and mentoring of things like we want to give um students more of that than just to be able to say oh look here's an a to z amazon fba training go and follow it ask us if you've got any questions. We'd rather be there as a sounding board that you get access to whenever you need us to ask us questions, to validate products, to help you with reaching out to suppliers, to do anything that would help you keep your momentum going. Because this is, again, all this has just come from what me and Peter wish we had when we first started, okay? And yes, we did get access to some of this through the, the, the company we both used to mutually work for, but it was never in depth as what we'd wanted at all. Um, so this is why we put this together and there's tons in here like it mainly comes down to the coaching every week that we want to give people um, so you can see we've got an active community we're currently growing uh, weekly live Q&A's private mastermind community everything we just put everything in there and or if all this did was help you literally make the same money that Peter's first product made and most probably a lot more you know, would it actually be worth it? Like how much would, if you had an extra 2,271 pounds or more come into your account every month, like what would that do to you? you? Maybe you would invest that into more products. Maybe you would go on more holidays every every year, whatever it is for you. Maybe it's enough for you to start thinking about scaling this up and leaving a job that you don't enjoy. I don't know, everyone's different. Um, What about if it helps you find your first and next profitable product and provide you the skills to finally fulfill your dreams and not somebody else's. So this is one of the reasons why I started Amazon. Okay. Um, yeah. So kind of realize that a lot of people are at like a, a crossroad, if you like. Um, we're, we're more than happy for people to go out on their own and try this. Um, we've given you a lot of on this training. And again, we've got loads of coaching and stuff and videos on our YouTube channel, which talk you through a lot of stuff as well. Um, but as we've experienced, trial and error is a big thing when you're going this alone. You don't have guarantees of results. It could be expensive, can be a long journey. Um, and then obviously choice two is the most logical. Asking for help from me and Peter or PLM, which is obviously more fun, way more affordable. You'll reach success much, much faster and there's going to be less mistakes in terms of choosing the wrong products and making sure you choose the right products to actually make you money. Um, so these are the steps we kind of go through when working with people. We want to help people like overcome limiting beliefs and replace that with like an empowered mindset uh, of what it actually takes to fulfill like a, a business potential on Amazon. Yeah. Um, set you up on the Amazon seller platform and get you settled on there because it, it can be a little bit daunting at first. It's not that, you know, it's not that confusing, but sometimes it's nice just to have like a, a sounding board and show you, look, 
do this, do this, do this, and the steps by step Amazon wants you to do. Um, then obviously it will help you identify your first product and make sure it's profitable from the outset. So yeah, we would never let you go forward with ordering a product before we it ticks all the boxes for us and it has the highest chance of succeeding out the gate. Um, we'll help you source a reliable supplier for your products and negotiate the best pricing using, like we've shown you here, the proven scripts that we've got. And we've got some Google Docs as well you can you get access to, which is basically the scripts we've used to work with Chinese suppliers to build a long-term relationship with. Um, then we'll help you create attractive product listing. Uh, that's complete with pages of, sorry, complete with images, descriptions, and like launch preparation. So if you want to put money into advertising, say, we can show you exactly how to do that and set you up doing that. And then obviously introduce your product to markets, to, to more markets and strategically scale it to maximize its potential. So this is where we were talking about using it, uh, Amazon's global program to scale into all these different marketplaces. And that's all inside. Um, so yeah, everything's inside. This isn't. This is not the price you are going to pay. But we've put this on here as we think it's like that's kind of what we see the val the true value of it being. Um, it's not. You know, it, it has obviously the potential to make you a ton more than that. But again, some sometimes when you see people putting all the figures on here on other trains and stuff, I think sometimes when they're like, "Oh my god, it's like it's worth like two three hundred thousand pounds," and it's sometimes you. To me, it's a bit un unbelievable and almost uh, overwhelming. So we kind of put this on here as what is what we think it's worth. Um, but we want to be able to offer you this as just one single payment, unlimited access to me and Peter, everything for one payment of 997, okay? And there's no, literally, we don't want to have any restrictions or limits on this. So let's say, for example, you have product ideas. You just come to us with them. We'll jump on a call or we'll record a Loom video and show you which products we recommend. You can join our weekly live Q&A calls where we'll walk you through whatever you need help with. Literally, what just to put everything together in one package for one price, no restrictions, no silly upsells or anything, and we'll get you launched and selling on Amazon. So that's kind of like our little presentation for this evening. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Peter. Um, no, and there I'm... is... Thank you for... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, actually. You know, this. <laughs> every single... Do you know what? This is funny because like me and Peter have been doing this now for about a month and a half, two months. I think this is maybe the seventh or eighth presentation we've done. And every single time we forget to talk about this or we we get to that point where, oh my God, we've forgotten to talk about this. And this to me, this is, we wanted to add something else in here, right? And because when we first started on Amazon, one of the biggest things that was missing from the trainings that we got and the mentoring we got was actually being able to see over somebody's shoulder who was doing this at the same time as us. So we wanted to put together um, a special bonus for people who want to join today, which is called PLN Live, okay? So what me and Peter have started doing in the last few weeks is actually starting our own Amazon store again from scratch, where you'll get first-hand insights into our strategies and tactics for building another Amazon business, okay? So we wanted to put this together so you could almost be like a fly on the wall and watch us build our, our own business. Okay, so this comes down to... Like you'll see all our financial numbers. You'll see everything because in this game, for some reason, a lot of people seem to want to hide the products they sell. So they want to like keep everything secret because they think like someone's going to steal their products and this, that, and the other, which, do you know what? It actually does happen and it is frustrating. Um, it's, it doesn't happen as often as you would think, but people get really, really like secretive about what products they want to sell. Whereas we want to turn around and say, look, there is literally millions of product opportunities out there for, every, for more than enough for anybody who wants to sell on the platform. So we thought, well, what about if we build a store from scratch and show people everything and record every single video about how we're finding products, the money we're putting into this business, um, how we're scaling it, literally everything, and just give it to you. So if you want, you can follow along. You can rewatch the videos as you go. You can even build your store at the same time as us. So then you can almost follow along like, and, and basically borrow our skill sets if you like and steal our steal our knowledge steal our knowledge that way in an ethical way um so yeah we put that in there as well um there is a checkout link there i don't know if there's a checkout link in the in the in the chat in the chat at all but basically check out .prolaunchninja.com and you can sign up today and we will be sending out the replay if you guys want to catch up with that but if you have any questions as well um on anything we've talked about like please fire away um on amazon in general or anything we've talked about I'd be happy to answer them absolutely yeah folks that was a 
I really enjoyed that presentation and I hope you guys have questions. Um, like I said, as Alex said, anything we've discussed tonight, you know, Amazon in general, you know, anything at all, fire ahead. Be funny if there's no questions. And maybe there's no, maybe we covered it all. <laughs> I have loads of questions just in general, but I don't know where to start. <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. I, I love questions. I love Q&A. <laughs> Um, well, I've just been like researching about all this. I saw it originally on TikTok um, quite a while ago, and I kept saying um, to my partner, "Oh, um, I'm really interested in this Amazon FBA. I want to learn more about it." Mm -hmm. And then in the last week or so, we've just been every night uh, watching YouTube and TikTok, you know, and just trying to get as much information as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we are really interested in it. So um, this was just good to kind of le like learn what it's all about. Um, I just wondered is um, I've read a lot about the uh, like retail arbit arbitrage. Would you say it's, uh, private labels like the best to just go straight into? Well, do you want me to answer that, Alex? And I'll probably let you come in as well. Um, so yeah, sure. what what we discovered was like the thing about private label is right you're building your own brand, right? So when you identify a product on private label, right? Like say what we did there when Alex was showing you like the cargo bars, for example, right? You come in, you create your own brand. So I don't know, it could be Kelsey's Automotive or something like that, right? I'm not suggesting that's the name, but let's say it is, right? You put that on the box, you put that on the brand, you have a nice logo, you get it manufactured in China, you have your own EAN number, which is like a barcode, which means that you're the only person that can sell that product, right? you figure out the run rate. So we figure out like we're selling 50, 80, 100, 150, 200 units a month or 300, whatever it is, right? We figure that out and then we keep it in stock. With retail arbitrage or with, you know, um, drop shipping or any of these things, like keeping products in stock, it's it's next to impossible because you, you don't control that end of the supply chain. The prices could change. Like I, I mean, when I was doing drop shipping, the prices would change like that and that made, meant I lost money. Um, as soon as I go to order something and it wasn't in stock. Um, so the reality is by doing private label, once you figure out your run rates, you're in stock, you can keep it in stock. Also, unlike the other businesses like wholesale or you know dropship or anything this, like you don't really have a business. Yes, you're buying and selling stuff, but if the other suppliers stop you buying or sometimes suppliers don't like you reselling their products, but say you just stopped, your business is worth zero. Whereas with private label, if you do this right and build a brand and, you know, that brand does 100K or 150K a year or whatever turnover, you know, whatever you make it do, right, by adding in products, that isn't worth something now, right? Which means that, you know, maybe in two, three, four years time, Kelsey, you could say, I'm going to sell my business. And suddenly your business is worth three to four times the turnover of the business to actually someone to buy it because they can say, I can look back over the last four years and I can see that product has been selling consistently. I can see the consistent revenues. Whereas a drop shipping and wholesale, it's all different products. You don't control anything really. And there's no business there to buy. You're just buying, you're just doing something for time. Whereas with private label, mm. it can become much more passive as well. Because once you build that relationship with the supplier, you know, those goods are going straight to Amazon. You're like, oh, I know, I just need to reorder now. Just you just tell the supplier and just quick email and they just do it. And it, that, yeah. that consistency, you know, so that's why. Personally, yeah. for me, I think and I believe private label is probably the best long term play. Like, as Alex said, yes, sometimes you can make a small bit of money doing, you know, um, retail arbitrage or, you know, any of these other things. And you can do it, but it's probably not a long term business if you kind of get me. Yeah. Yes, you can yeah. learn about Amazon doing it, but not a long term business. Alex, do you have anything to add on that? No, you have, you've covered everything. I mean, like, like I'm not, I'm not going to, I don't want to be that person that sits here and just tries to force private label down yeah. your neck. Like I, I, all we want to do is train is to expose you to all these different types of selling on Amazon. Obviously me and Peter are big fans of private label because that's what we've had the success with. Um, I've tried other different models like drop shipping and retail arbitrage. And the only thing I found with retail arbitrage I didn't like was the fact that I couldn't control stock. I was having to spend a lot of my own time going around looking for these products. And to me, it wasn't, it wasn't a scalable long-term business. Whereas if I wanted to expand this into multiple marketplaces without my actual, the, the time I invested into the business to grow it didn't go up substantially. Um, private label was always the answer. Um, whereas 
you know, yeah, retail arbitrage, you could definitely start for way less money. Um, like I, I, you could get, literally start with a few hundred pounds, but is that going to make you life changing money? I, I, I don't think it will. Um, or yeah. it, it, you'd have to put a lot more work into making that happen. Um, I tried it as a test just to compare it against private label and it did work, but again, yeah, just the long term, the long term, it wasn't really for me. Like private labels always been, yeah, just more scalable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so with private label, do you like like with the Ali Alibaba, do you contact them and they do the labeling and everything and um for you? Basically? So so what happens is like so you find a product on Amazon, you find a product opportunity, right? And then you're like, right, cool. We've got a product opportunity here. We'll go to Alibaba.com, we'll find this exact or you know we'll find this exact product on Alibaba and you probably will find multiple different suppliers for that product. Um, Cause the amount Alibaba is like a hub for Chinese suppliers and manufacturers. Every most Chinese suppliers and manufacturers use that platform because they just, it's like a, a hub that everybody goes to, to fight, to, to connect with suppliers and manufacturers. So then you reach out to that supplier through Alibaba using their chat system, which is fairly good. Um, some suppliers will give you their email and you'll just, you know, start communicating back and forth via email. Um, you would then order a sample of that product, um, which generally is more expensive than the actual, um, it's usually, the sample is actually more expensive to start with because it has to cover the shipping price of one single item, mm. um, which, you know, let's say for example, you have this 25 pound product that we gave the example of on the call. You may be looking at about 70, 80 pounds for that sample, which sounds a lot, but a lot of the times the supplier will then take that off your first order. So it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't matter, but you get yeah. a sample, you test it, you know, you, you make sure it's what you're after. And then you place an order of that, um, like that product of maybe one to 300 units, which sounds a lot, but it's not a lot at all. Um, and then what happens is you ask the supplier to put a, a barcode on the, on the item for you and box it up. And then it will be sent to you or sent directly into Amazon as you wish. So all this prep work is done beforehand. And it's kind of like um, uh, like a, a process you go through with your supplier. So they basically will do anything you ask them to do, if that makes yeah. sense. Um, yeah. They leave it ready. And if you obviously, go on, you want to jump in, Peter. No, basically just saying they leave it ready. So once you tell them yeah. to do X, Y, and Z, you give them the label, the design, which we can make. They leave it ready. And then just goes into Amazon and it's ready to go. So there's no real, there shouldn't be any handle of the product for you. You know, if this is no. done right, yeah. there's no handling. And then it just makes reordering so easy because you know it's going to be right. Yeah. yeah. Like the reality yeah. is, Kelsey, you are designing a new product for all intents and purposes. Maybe not like the physical design of it, but, you know, you might be putting a bonus item in or, you know, improving it slightly or whatever. So you can ask them to do whatever you want and they'll do it. Yeah. Just Great. make sure it works. Yeah. Um, yeah, it sounds really good. Sounds really oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> any other questions? From any more else? questions, folks? Um, anyone else? Um, just thinking. <laughs> I'm just no, reading. You're right. No pressure. No pressure. I've been making yeah, <laughs> um, so I'm just reading through what I've what I've wrote. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you, Marion. How, how much? Um, do, how much would you say you'd need for um the private label compared to the other the other types so of sale? When I started, I started back in 2018. And what I started off with was basically my first product was under a thousand pounds, under a thousand dollars, right? And that's what it oh, sorry, Marion's coming back in here. So that was how much it cost me to get started, right? With my first product, right? And that that was the dog whistles, right? But generally you know you want to be aiming a little bit more so depending on what you're looking to spend i would say between two and three k is kind of like where you want to be at um, and yeah. that's not to say you couldn't do it for less and the reality is yeah. like it's a it's a safe investment because when you do the research in terms of what the product sells at like you we've done our calculations we know that you know we can sell at that price and make a profit and that's what the market is selling at, at the moment but say you said you know what i want to sell it for a bit less you can undercut that and you'd be fit to sell it as well. So it's a very yeah. safe kind of investment that way. Like you're not, you might think, oh, I'm spending all this money. I'll never get it back. But you will, 
like once you, yeah. do, once you do your sums right and you examine the marketplace and say, well, there's not many competition. Yeah. You know what? I can bring it at that price. You know, I've got this, I've got 10, 15 pound, whatever it is, wriggle room. Like, you know what I mean? Like you can be, you could be super competitive. I would recommend selling at that price, but you could sell it nearly a cost and it would be gone if you wanted it to be, but I wouldn't yeah. recommend that. No, you want, you want to, like we said before, it makes a good product. It needs to be profitable. Um, otherwise, it's not, you know, we're, not, we're not building a charity here. We're building a business. Yeah. And I'll, I'll um, just a bit of um, experience, actually. So when I first sold my first product, and uh, my first product, honestly, was uh, it was a microwave wall bracket, right? So it was the most, again, super simple product. And it was just basically for mounting a microwave on a wall. And I invested just shy of $3,000 into that product, right? And that was for maybe... I think between about 500 and a thousand units in just the UK. And when I first in it, like brought that product in and, and paid that supplier, I was a bit, to be honest with you, I was quite scared. I was like, Christ, I've just spent all this money or invested all this money into a product. And I was like, Christ, I'm not going to see that money ever again. But then as soon as the product started selling, honest to God, it's the, it's the, the coolest feeling when you see um, a sale, your first sale come in off a product that you've found uh, and you will literally do everything in your power to find more money to put into this business. I, I guarantee it, which is what, well, that's what happened to me anyway. Um, I was quite skeptical to start with. And then I, then I pulled the trigger on a product that I knew it would sell. And I was a bit like, Christ, I'm actually quite scared now. It's getting real. And then as soon as that money started coming back, it, honestly, it was just like um, a tidal wave of emotions. To put it that way. It was um, it very, very cool. Very cool turning point, even though it was only 20 or 30 pounds of a product. Um, but then that just starts to scale. And again, then all your job is then just to try and keep that thing in stock, keep, keep looking at your run rates and how much you're selling and then start contacting suppliers at the right time to reorder products to make sure you don't run out of stock. Um, I remember, I remember Alex, my first sale, it was actually, um, yeah, I said back in 2018 and it was, um, I was living in Swords at the time in Dublin, just the North side of Dublin city. And, uh, basically I remember I, was, I kept refreshing my phone. I was like, I seen this thing change from zero to one. And I was like, what? No, that, that couldn't be right. And I did it again. And then it, like a few minutes later, I went to two. And I was like, this can't be, I thought it was a mistake. Like, this is not. So someone had bought my dog whistles. And I always thought this was the the best thing ever. I was like, what? I was looking at their names and all, like who it was and all this. And um, it was actually St. Patrick's Day as well. So there you are. But I remember that. I couldn't believe it. Like, and it, it people really do buy the stuff. Like, that's the mad thing. People do. And there's customers for everything. Like, there's the randomest products. Like, yeah, like, you know. Do you have a question, Mariam? Yeah, can you hear me now? Sorry, the audio. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah um, just to give a bit of background on myself, um, I nearly finished my e-commerce degree. Um, I'm uh, graduating this year. Where are you studying, and... Mariam? Sorry to interrupt. Where are you studying? Um, DIT. Oh, DIT. Oh, very good, very good. I I went to yeah. college in Dublin. I did a master's in well, it's DCU, but um. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Good choice. Good choice of degree. <laughs> yeah. So I'm doing e commerce and like um I set up a business about three years ago. Um mm -hmm. and it's private label as well. And I have like my own website and stuff. And like one of the main issues that I've kind of like run into after like three years is like just going to the post office and trying to fulfill it myself. <laughs> and just like with college and like everything, it's just been so like hectic and <laughs> one of like my main issues and just even like I'm looking to like possibly like move and like my business can't like move everywhere with me because of just like my market and um, is mainly in like the UK and Ireland so I was looking to like get onto Amazon and stuff um but like I just had like a few questions because I Fire. think yeah I think it was Peter who I saw like he said he set up a business in the UK and not actually Ireland mm -hmm. absolutely um, so like, how did you go about it that way? Like why as well? Okay. So basically Ireland's a small market, right? And um, so like it wouldn't, there's only about 4 million people in the Republic of Ireland, right? And um, like Northern Ireland is UK. So that comes part of Amazon UK, right? And basically the UK is the main market near here. Like you've got Germany, you've got France, you've got Italy, you've got all these other markets, right? But the UK is the main English speaking market to near Ireland, right? So by having, and I'm not a tax person, but I will give you my two cents from how do you apply it. Um, by having a UK entity, right, which isn't hard set up, right? I think it's about £12 from gov.uk, right? And basically, 
you can avail of, and this is what we recommend everyone to do. When you set up a UK company and when you want to start selling on Amazon, you can avail of 85,000 pounds tax free or VAT, sorry, VAT threshold. So basically it means that you don't pay VAT till you reach 85,000 pounds, right? Which means that we're selling products and ultimately we're charging the 20% VAT um, but we're not, we don't have to give it back to HMRC, which is like revenue, right? We don't have to give it back to them. When we pass 85,000 pounds in turnover, we then need to register for VAT. But you can register for something known as the half uh, half rate scheme. So basically, I always make a balls at that name. Sorry, lads. <laughs> but I always make a mess of it. But basically, we can register for that scheme. And it means that we can now remit 8.5% VAT to HMRC, but we still charge 20%. As an Irish company, if I went into the UK and started selling in the UK, from day one, I'd have to register for VAT. Um, so that's why I always recommend to everyone, and regardless of where they are in the world, I actually always recommend a UK company. And a UK company can sell in Europe um, by sending goods directly to Germany. You know, we can sell there, or we can actually let Amazon take care of it and fulfill EU orders from the UK if we want. That is now back since Brexit. That stopped for a while, but it's now back which means they can fulfill orders from UK stock to anyone on like, you know, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, or I said, we can send goods to Germany or any other EU market that we choose. And we can also use a UK business to sell into the U S into Canada, into Australia. So really like I wouldn't get hung up on what, like in terms of if you had to change your country for your business to the UK, you know, if UK is your primary market, that's why I recommend having my business registered. And um, like mm. I, I'm lucky enough, like I, I live near the border. So if I was ever sending stuff, I would always post it in Northern Ireland and it's much quicker and much cheaper, I'm sure for you. Um, but if you can get the stuff yeah. into Amazon UK, like they'll take care of the fulfillment and just, it's, it's probably better just to have a UK entity doing that. Um, that's my two cents, Mary, I'm on it. Not saying you can sell with an Irish company, you just wouldn't get the same advantages. Okay, and just to be clear, like it, say if I had like a customer in like the US as well. Yeah. yeah. Do I have to set up an uh, Amazon accounts for each market? So you have, so the European account, right, which is the UK and all the different European countries, right? There's quite a number of markets there, right? That is the EU side of things, this side of the pond. The US side, which is like North America account, which actually has Mexico, the US and Canada. That's all under one account. That's a separate subscription. They can be linked together. So like, you know, your one email and your one business can have both accounts but you pay separately per month for either side of the pond. Okay. And, and then for selling goods, if you were selling goods in the US and you wanted to use Amazon, say to sell them, I would recommend sending those goods. You can get Amazon to fulfill them from the UK, but like it's really slow. People have paid duty, bring them into America, different things like this. You're better off. Um, you're better off just send the goods straight to America and put them in an Amazon fulfillment center there. If you want to sell on Amazon in the US or in, into Canada or whatever, you know? It's not that okay. hard, like, as in it can be done. Yeah. And just for example, so I have a product that, like, um, I charge, I think it's, like, £22 um, okay. for it. But, like, I just took a look at Amazon right there, and um, it's selling for maybe about, like, 8 to £10. Okay. Um, and I think, like, obviously the reason that I charge that price is because I, like, do marketing in the background and I have, like, a lot of customers and, like, it's a brand in itself and, like, there's yeah. a community built around that. Whereas, like, on Amazon, like, they may not necessarily have seen, like, what has been, like, advertised on TikTok and stuff. Do you think, like, would I need to reduce my price in order to compete with the rest of the people or would I be able to market it in a different way um, okay. where it's like they see the brand value compared okay. to the rest so on Amazon right so like you need to be you need to have a trademark and all registered right um, so again it would need to be with the IPO intellectual property office uh, so that's in the UK right um, and if it was registered there you can avail of like you know you can do brand A plus content so basically you can really advertise your brand on your on your listing right um, so you can try to get that across there. You can try to get that across in images. Like when I first started selling, I didn't really care about brand. I only cared about product. Whereas now I care about product and I care about brand because that's something that you can sell down the line. Um, without knowing the details, I can't really say for definite, you know, whether you'd be able to get the higher price. You may and you may not. Like ultimately what me and, what me and Alex teach is very much on like identifying 
products in the market that we can come in and maybe, you know, bring in that product to fulfill demand, you know, fill the gap in the market. Um, yeah. Whereas if you already have a product, it may or may not match our tests to say, look, this is a really good market to go on Amazon. Now, if you want to expand further, what I'd recommend is, you know, if you bring in other products, great. And if you have this product, I wouldn't be against putting it onto the platform, mm. but that's not to say that it wouldn't, I can't say how it would do against, you know, because every I product performs differently on different marketplaces. Uh, just, I'll just jump in quickly and give my two cents. I, I think it's, I think it is possible. I have friends in the similar, similar boat to you in just that example you've just described, and they are in the green supplement space. They sell green powder, mm-hmm. like green, um, uh, what do you call it? Like, um, it's just a green supplement drink, and they, they have gone, um, th- their product is fairly highly priced compared to most people in the market. So they aren't bothered about competing with anyone else. They're not bothered about being. The, the the cheapest or compete on price they literally have staked their sword on the floor and said look this is this is the value of what we offer it's this price for a reason um and they sell on amazon all day every day as well as their own website um whether whether or not they push traffic from their website to amazon as part of that is something that i am not sure on but i know they still sell products and shift products on amazon it doesn't matter um you know if you if you focus on building your brand on amazon as well as where you've already got it on maybe your other e-commerce store like peter was saying yeah. before about the a plus content and that basically enables you to build almost like a mini website on your product page so you can you can have videos really really high quality images more than just what you would see on the top of the product listing page so you can build out and that this is where you would build out your brand on amazon as well as your other stores you know if you've got a website or things like that um, it's just always good to I think I think net just just because of how big Amazon is and how much people use the Prime services, it's it's almost good to have a presence on there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like people go to Amazon to buy most things now. If you ask people like where did you get that from, where are you going looking for that, for for a lot of people and a lot of products, they're just straight away they associate that that buying something online with Amazon to so go there. So then for me, it's like well, doesn't it make sense to have a have your brand? on there associated with amazon um and then you can de- obviously develop marketing strategies and uh, around that um whether you want to make sales through your site and still continue to fulfill them through going to the post office or get amazon to do that it's another you know another question but yeah i i completely understand where you're from and uh where you're coming from sorry and I have friends in the same boat and they've made it work um, i think it's worth as well you you touched on it alex um like using amazon to fulfill the orders would be like if you're doing, especially yeah. from Ireland to the UK, like, you know, you really, on post is like the postal courier in Ireland. Oh, they, don't they start with on yeah, post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're just not Horrible. good, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're just not good, right? Um, and by using Amazon fulfillment, Amazon logistics, like people will get their goods like same day or next day. You know you know what I mean? Like it's, it'll be really fast and you can fulfill, like if you're on uh, Shopify, you can integrate that with your Amazon and you can basically fulfill your orders automatically from Amazon to your UK consumers or maybe to your European ones, and they'll get it really fast. Whereas on post, like as I said, things just take a yep. long, long, long time. Like UK delivery is very good. Like I often, I can order stuff in London at 5 p.m. and I can have it to like Belique, which is near me, like it's 25 minutes, half an hour away. It's in Northern Ireland. I can have it next day, 9 a.m. Like if on post seen that, it just would be years coming. <laughs> You know, so, yeah, so definitely like just the integration you said there with Shopify because my store is currently on Shopify. So like, would I need to like create like would I have an Amazon storefront? I'm just thinking like in terms of like okay, I have an Instagram and I have links in my bio to um my website. Like, how would I do that? Would I need to pull that website and then have an Amazon storefront? No, I, or could I have it them, all be have them. Have them all together. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't okay. change it. I just leave your leave your non Amazon store as it is. Make a really good listing on Amazon, and and away you go, and you'll you'll be absolutely absolutely fine. So that that's how I would do it. And just it automatically integrates in the background. So that that's absolutely yeah. fine. There's plugins you can get to do that. Um, I'm just wondering as well, just before we go, like, is Tom, do you have any questions? Um, no, no. I think you've you've well, I've got lots of questions, but they're all really complicated. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> I'll tell you what Tom, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what might be a better idea like we'll you'll get the replay of this call if any of you guys want to go through it again um we'll send that out an email tomorrow but also you can hit reply to any of those emails that will come at you 
um, with any questions yeah. you have, and we'll we'll make a Loom video to respond to any of those questions as well. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm 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 kind of setting up two Amazon stores. One for my wife who who uh, has a business, so she's got her own kind of giftware company. So she and she gets stuff kind of manufactured in China anyway, but she's got like a distribution house in this country and. So one of the big decisions we're kind of working on at the moment is like whether we keep that, you know, so it's merchant fulfilled or whether we use, um, um, you know, Amazon FBA or we, we use both, you know, and, it, and it's like, you know, and I think listening to you, you know, there's like, there's, got, I think there are, there are huge advantages with having that kind of like, um, you know, direct connection between the supplier and F, F, Amazon fulfillment. Um, and it's just it's just a bit fiddly, you know, because like we've we've got kind of stock control for her 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 stuff that's kind of being sent to her distribution center, and then we'll have another kind of like stream of of you know, and it's whether the suppliers who are supplying the stuff at the moment will be able to kind of like do others all the stuff at their end that they need to to make the products ready for Amazon, you know, and that's that's a because they're quite some of the some of the products are not that straightforward to either package or or but I think. If you package them, you can label them. But whether the suppliers at the moment will be able to do mm. that or not, it's, it's, it's all a bit fiddly. But then again, I'm also going to I'm also <laughs> setting up my own um, uh, uh, Amazon shop, and I think that'll probably be a private label um, model. I'm basically stealing all your uh, all your information and ideas. Um, and I like, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kind of seriously thinking about the 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 offer of like the, the the mentorship and stuff. I think it's a really cool thing, and I think it would, it fits in really well with where I am at the moment in my particular journey. That's what people say at the moment, isn't it? Journey. You're always on a journey. On a journey of life. Um, yes. So, <laughs> so, guys, so yeah, so my journey is like, just yeah, it's just think... going to fit in really well. I have to say, guys, you've all been great. The whole lot of you, um, Marion, yeah. Kelsey, Tom. To, you're, you're probably our best audience, I think, because your questions have been really good. And sometimes the questions are a bit like, meh, where these ones are like, you know, they're good and they're <laughs> yeah. on point. And they're like, they make us think. And I, I like that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. as Alex said, like, it's, it's getting a bit late now, so I'm just conscious of everyone. But yeah, yeah. at the same time, um, if you guys have more questions, like, reach out. We're happy to answer them. Marion, I know, like, me being from Ireland probably helps you a bit because you know there's different things we have to kind of deal with sometimes. Um, so definitely I can help you there. Um, Kelsey, as I said, yep. you've more questions, shoot them over. We're happy to help, and we would be happy to have you inside Polange Ninja. Like we do give really good support, the best we can, just to make sure that you know you guys don't make any costly mistakes. Like that person that messaged me on TikTok saying I bought this because it said buy it, and I was like, no, just don't do that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So yeah. yeah. So folks, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably let us off for the night, but um guys, thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Take care, guys. Talk to you soon, all right? Bye. Bye bye. bye. bye, -bye. bye.